everyone, I am Mecha Random 42 your favorite YouTube harpy, and we have some Captain Marvel and box office-y sort of stuff. I don't usually do a lot of the box office sort of videos, but but I, I have a kind of fun little little take on this one. You've already saw it in the, in the thumbnail, that's why you're here, but we're going to read some of these articles first and go over some really cool stuff over from Twitter. Captain Marvel, this is from Deadline Hollywood, posts Marvelous $11 million second weekend, blah blah blah, who cares? She, she looks so bored to be in her own movie and she's got, does she, does she have crap on her face here? Is this on my, okay, no, that's on the, that's on the picture. She's got something hanging off of her face. <sighs> right. After a dry winter, it's nice to see a double digit grossing weekday, which is exactly what Disney's Captain Marvel did Monday, grossing and grossing, grossing, yes, with a T, an estimated 11 million in early morning reports. That's the third best Monday ever in March after 2016's Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice and blah, blah, blah. Who cares? All movies. I did. No, I saw the first Hunger Games. I didn't see the rest of these in the theater. I actually didn't see Hunger Games in the theater either. I saw that with um, Rift Tracks. That's the best way to watch any of these big blockbuster movies, riff tracks. Captain Marvelous opening. That's bad. That is a bad related article. I wanted to read that because it's so bad. Captain Marvelous opening. Oh, God. Just gag me. Just gag me right now. That's, that's a dad pun. And that's not even a good dad pun. The four, uh, through four days of release, Captain Marvel counts an estimated gross of 164.6 million in U.S. and Canada. Disney report. Do they usually report uh, lump in Canada as well with the U.S.? I don't remember them ever doing that. Uh, tell me, tell me if they usually do that. See, no surprise if Tuesday sees a spike due to uh, Exhibit's discount tickets today. Yeah, and that that's the other problem with Tuesdays. Well, no, because the box office will, will be lower because the tickets will be $5. <laughs> so, so see that, consider that. A lot of people were probably waiting for the $5 Tuesday after hearing, yeah, it's kind of meh. That's actually what I should have done was waited for a $5 Tuesday, but no, I wanted to get my review out. I, I'll link my review in the description below if you haven't seen it yet. YouTube's been really burying anybody talking about Captain Marvel who isn't one of the approved CNN, ABC, you know, th those sort of entertainment tonight, those little, those little things, those little legit news outlets, right? As we mentioned, Captain Marvel is apt to break, uh, to pass, apt to pass break pass break even pass break even that doesn't sound right when you have to say it I know, I know they're trying to say it's going to pass its break even point here um and it's theatrical cycle before the end of the week all is a celebration for the studio the pick counts total production and marketing costs of 300 million see that seems a little low to me considering all of the marketing it's a marvel movie for crying out loud you, you got toys, you got, well, I guess toys would be like marketing in another sort of arena, right? It wouldn't be like a, a billboard ad or a, or a poster on the side of a bus or something. Yeah. So I, I, I'm thinking they're, they're a, a little bit low with their kind of advertising costs. Keep in mind, they also had the GoFundMes and a whole bunch of those sort of charitable organizations. They had the charity tickets they were throwing in there that probably came out of a charity bucket, which I would have counted as as part of how their their ticket sales went up it's all a huge mess it's a huge huge mess <laughs> it is kind of hilarious to follow really statistically speaking per film finance sources it's always the 100 million plus budgeted picks that have a higher chance of profiting at the box office versus a low budget fare while captain marvel flew solo this last weekend as the sole major studio release, that's another reason why it did relatively well, which we kind of figured it would. I know I kind of figured, well, it's not going to flop. It's certainly not going to flop. It's not going to be a bomb. It wasn't up against anything. Like a Medea movie? Seriously? Who cares, right? I know a couple of people are going to say, I love Medea. And you're, you're you know, ha I'm happy for you, but like the majority of people aren't going to see the Medea movie. <laughs> Ah, <sighs> flew solo. God, that, that's bad. That's just another bad pun. It's not even funny. It's not even a groaner. 
She'll encounter three wild entries this weekend. Let's see. DreamWorks Sci-Fi Captive State, Paramount's animated feature Wonder Park. Oh, that looks cute. And a CBS uh, film Lionsgate Romance, Five Feet Apart. She will not cower, but rather step on each and every one of them with an anticipated 70 plus million second weekend. Yeah, or maybe people will just stay home. You know, just stay home. Don't go to the movie this weekend. You don't have to. If nothing looks good and Captain Marvel's getting crappy views, you don't have to go to the movies this weekend. You know, go to dinner. Go go to a... There, if there is a cool place that has, like, a microbrew and bands and stuff near, go there. You don't have to go see Captain Marvel. <sighs> if it hits the that number, then Captain Marvel will be the seventh best <laughs> MCU second frame ever. <laughs> Seventh best. That's that's not good. Seven out of what? Ten movies? Now there have been more than ten movies. My, my point is, seventh? She's going to be seventh if she hits the 70. That's kind of laughable. And, and that's the second frame, right? That's not even like a main, like an Avengers movie. Oh, wow. That's... After Iron Man 3. <laughs> okay. For, from all of the information I've kind of gathered of like comments and friends and people I know in real life and people I know on the internet, Iron Man 3 is kind of the worst, one of the worst of the MCU. It's striving to be less profitable its second weekend than Iron Man 3. That's not something to be proud of. That's not something to be proud of. <sighs> So, <laughs> yeah, yes, they did. They did kind of almost meet for Monday. It's just just a hair under 11 million. They're going to round up, of course, because they like lying and embellishing and making it look better than it is. Here's here's the fun thing, though. So so here's the here's the foreign here's the foreign stuff, and I will scooch my face over just for a second here. So so we have the foreign total going up to the 300 million but according to i have to click here according to china saturday it, it, it only it barely held even from friday to saturday in china sunday drops down 28 percent. monday another 70 percent after that 28 percent, right or is it 70 total this actually might be higher if it's another 70 after the uh right oh lord Anyway, I I should have done the math before doing the video. I'm bad. I'm bad at math. I'm like severely dyslexic with numbers. So this is why I don't do like, like a lot of the box office videos. Here's the fun thing though. Here's the fun thing. Um, Go over to Box Office Mojo. Play around with the website. It is absolutely hilarious. Let's look at the drops. Let's look at the average drop offs in like the release months. With Captain Marvel coming in as number one, even though it just released... <laughs> Even though it just released, like even though it, like this is this whole Ready Player One from last year dropped off, Beauty and the Beast dropped off forty nine percent, and we keep scrolling and we keep scrolling and we keep scrolling down to the very bottom of the list with Porky's having the smallest drop off. Total, it's a classic. Go watch Porky's. They would never be allowed to do it today. As well as three of the best, one of the best franchises in my opinion, and this is what's on the video thumbnail. You guys are waiting for this part. I hope you're waiting for this part. Were you waiting for the Police Academy part? Police Academy 1, 2, and 3. Police Academy 1 actually gained 80%. But see, here's the cool thing about the Police Academy movies. They, they t tended to stay in theaters for like three months. If they came out in the last week of March, they were in the theater until like, July, pretty much. So I, I did, I did go ahead and uh, play around. Like I said, I, I wanted to play around with this. This is kind of fun. Police Academy. Actually, if if you kind of go in here and you click around, you can look at their whole opening, their whole opening weekend. Right, they open at number one. It's kind of awesome here, and. You can see like its whole, its whole like weekend and weekly and, and yeah, this, this is kind of fascinating. I just love, I just love this. I just love the fact that, you know, Paul Barmal cop. <laughs> no, you should give me similar movies in like budget and money. You you can see that this this is what's really fascinating here. 
it it jumps up again in June and in in May. So basically holiday weekends. May was probably what Labor Day. It's one of those. I'm bad with holidays too. The, whatever holidays in May is right around the time. I, I think it's Labor Day, Memorial Day. It's one of those. It's it's Memorial Day. It's 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 the the one in May. Right around there, it, it jumps up a little bit here for that weekend and in June for this weekend. There, I think there's a holiday. One of them is probably Easter. Pretty much every police academy does that, though, when you go into their weekly box office. They all jump up over this May holiday, which is kind of awesome. Uh, police Academy 2 didn't, but they stay in the theaters for a long time because they weren't cranking out movies every week to be kind of disposable. So say, pretty much every police academy movie has that jump in, the, in May. Police Academy 3 wasn't in theaters that long. This was kind of around the time when they were starting to, to taper off and they were having a few more theaters pop up and a few more, a few more, the, uh, a few more specialty lower, lower end sort of theaters. So you'd have like the small towns that had two screens. Like when I was a kid growing up, I remember having inner space and space balls playing at the same time on our only theater in town, right? And then you could go to like the next town over and see the Police Academy movies or Star Trek. I had to go to the next town over to see Star Trek 4 in the theater. So this was just kind of an interesting thing that, that Captain Marvel is actually dropping off way more than po the Police Academy 1, 2, 3 and Porky's. They, they, they love to spin how much, how, how good these movies are, but they're really... They, <sighs> They're, they're kind of throwing all of their eggs in the opening weekend basket. They're, they're being very clever and very manipulative about how they're marketing this movie. When they place this in the theater, they are taking full advantage of everything they can to give this the best box office success possible. Being the movie they, re they teased in The Last Avengers to being the one they opened right before the, the end game, like the end game Avengers movie. They know what they're doing. You know, they, they really, really know what they're doing. This is why I never said it's going to flop. This is why I never said it was going to be a failure. I said it might have a lower box office than I think they anticipate. But, you know, they're counting in, like, the, the four-day totals. They're counting in a lot of things, like their charity tickets. Uh, they're, they're counting in a lot of little shady things. So tell me what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys on the next video or live stream. Bye! Thanks for watching! If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button, and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe! See you in the next video! Bye!